name is Bruce Erickson with Certified Scientific Instruments. We've been selling DNA sequencers since 2001 and I wanted to talk to you today about how to buy a DNA sequencer. The first thing you want to look at when buying any instrument is to make sure that you're getting an actual serial number for that instrument. This will uh, be important for you because it will differentiate the people who are actually having those instruments in-house versus brokers that are going to take your deposit and go look for an instrument to buy. So on a DNA sequencer, on the back right corner, you'll see the date of um, manufacture and you'll see the serial number. You should get that on any quote that you get, just like if you were going to buy a car, you would want to know what the VIN number was. That's on the back of the 3730XLs, the 3130XLs, the 310s, etc. And these particular Sanger sequencers are built, were originally built by Applied Biosystems and we've been rebuilding them for about 18 years now. The core of what we do is in the laser. And the lasers, as you're aware, are going to burn out over a number of years of use. When we started doing uh, the rebuilds, we were using lasers that were recharged and we found that going with a brand new laser core and now a laser core that's one inch longer, they just last a lot longer than the OEM ones. So when they start <clears throat> to burn, they're going to pull about 5 amp draw, not a 6 amp draw as the OEM ones, and that will make a difference in years of service for you. When we sell an instrument, we want to give you a one year warranty on the instrument and a two year on the laser, because we know that these lasers last and last and last. And the laser core has also got a new anode and cathode on it, because in that tube, it's a little bit like an artery, and it'll clog over time and take more and more power to jam that light down through that laser. But also, parts of the anode and cathode can break off unless you replace those as well when you're replacing the laser tube. So that's what you want to look at on a laser tube. That's what you want to ask for, and that's what we provide for you when we're uh, rebuilding an instrument. That's core. Now, Jerry, if you pan over here, <coughs> This is the side of the instrument that the laser goes in on. And if I open these doors here, you'll see that there's a lot of things that seem to be missing. And in fact, they are missing. This came to me a number of years ago when I had an Austin Hilly Sprite that I was having some work done on by a local rebuilder. And they stripped it down to the frame and they started building that, that Austin Hilly, in this case it was a 3000, up from the, the basic metal work on. That's what we do here. So, we've taken the oven out, we're going to go through it with a Q-tip to clean everything. We're going to want to have this thing be impeccable. In here is the, uh, where the uh, capillary is, and that's where the laser is going to read the instrument. We want to make sure all these optics are perfect. We want to make sure that they're perfect so that when we go and we start to put it back together, we have a situation like we have here. But when we open the oven door, it's absolutely white inside. Now you can see this is a 16 capillary array, and that means that the polymer is going to migrate up through this array down into your DNA sample, and then that that uh, DNA is going to migrate back up through the polymer and get read here by the laser. You want all this to be clean, you want it to be impeccable because the, the better and the cleaner this is, the more likely it is that you're just going to have great results. This is a sapphire pump. The sapphire pump differentiates the 3100 which use syringes from the 3130's platform which use these sapphire pumps as does the 3730 platform. <clears throat> and we go and we assemble all of this, we put it back together, and then we wet test it. The reason for that is you can run a self test on one of these instruments, and you'll see it under the surface tools that should be on even the instrument you may have now. But what it doesn't do, it, it doesn't test, for example, the quality of the CCD camera. The CCD the CCD camera, for example, can pass, 
But in fact, the CCD camera will still have problems in, in terms of if it's burning out. So we wet test these. Why did we wet test them for ourselves is important because we wet test these so that when we put them in the crate, we know that when they get to you, they're going to go ahead and install easily. That's something that even the OEM did not do. They sent them out and they first wet tested them in the lab. We don't do that. We want to have, not only that, but uh, we want to have a CCD camera that, for example, on the 3730 has the latest chip in it. Because if we have to rebuild that CCD camera, we've got the chip that's better than an OEM chip. So we can work on these and service these from one end to the other. And our service person, because she's done hundreds of these things, we know what we're doing and we can give you service 24-7. And when you're buying an instrument, you don't want to have these coming from a company that's using a third-party provider in terms of installing that for you that may or may not be available when you need to talk to them. So you can talk to our service engineers on their cell phone at our lab. We're a brick and mortar place. You can come visit us and you can see what you're getting. They also have workman's comp. So when they're coming into your lab and they stub their toe or something, you're not going to have a problem with that. And they have full health insurance. It's a real, real, actual company that knows what we're doing. And we do. So I think that's it for now. Let me show you one more thing that's kind of important to us. And that is, here's a crate back here. And it's got another 3130 uh, in it. This is a four capillary instrument. And we built these ourselves out of three quarter inch maple veneer plywood. The reason we do that is we know when we strap this in, we've got it on a floater base as you can see down here. And it's strapped in and it's kept away from the sides of the crate by the strapping and the cleats on the, uh, on the bottom frame itself. That way, uh, they're more respected by your average forklift driver. It's the best insurance we can get because when you've got something with a quarter inch panel and a crate is, that looks like it's beat to hell, then the, then the forklift driver is treated accordingly. These they treat a little nicer. Does it guarantee things? Well, not all the time, but generally speaking, we've sent these all over the world and they're in good shape because it's real difficult for them to put a forklift through the side of a three-quarter inch maple plywood crate. Um, I think that's it for now. I'd be happy to talk to you if you want to come to your, our lab, if you want to see an instrument. We've got roughly a dozen uh, 3130 platform instruments now. We've got multiple 3730 uh, XLs right now. Maybe the only company that's actually got them with serial numbers that we can, we can send you photographs. And we'd be happy to work with you in terms of uh, providing instruments that will give you long service. Thank you so much for your time.